So in January 2014, uh, Mike Schwartz took up the post of Chief Executive Officer uh, of the International Institute of Marine Survey. Since then, he's made a number uh, and overseen a number of changes in the organisation and its structure, including redeveloping the website and implementing a digital communication strategy. So if you see him playing on his phone, he is tweeting live. Um, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. I must do tweeting one day. Um, but it is gathering a huge amount of interest and the profile of the organisation is, is, is going up exponentially as a result of Mike's uh, efforts and his ongoing efforts. It says, while well, learning fast, Mike has also developed the Marine Surveying Academy, the training division of the Institute, that's responsible for organising and delivering the training leading to accreditation through the new registered Marine Coatings Inspector qualification and the recently launched INCA CMID scheme. Now, you'll learn a little bit more about that, but I'm very excited about this as an opportunity for us in a resource-rich place like Australia. Mike's background is neither technical nor marine. However, he has proven business management skills. Prior to IMS, Mike was managing director for seven years for the events and exhibitions division of Johnson Press PLC, one of the UK's leading regional newspaper publishing groups. And before that, he held several director-level positions with large UK publishing and dig digital businesses. I'd like to, uh, you to join me in welcoming Mike to the stage and come and join me. Well, good morning. Let me just uh, put that up there. There we go. I'm Mike Schwartz. First of all, um, I bring greetings from UK, from the IMS uh, Management Board, who were very supportive of me coming out here to talk to you. Um, I'm very conscious that uh, you guys, so we're 12,000 miles apart, and a lot of what we do, if we're not careful, seem to be quite parochial. I always have to look bigger picture, and to look out and see what's out there. So, um, I bring you greetings from them. I also want to, because the, uh, the opportunity might not arise later on, I want to thank Adam, and I want to thank Karen, and I want to thank the committee for putting this on. Um, these things don't just happen. I know, we do stuff in the UK, it takes a lot of organisations, so Adam, thank you to you and your team, it's much appreciated. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you, I have to say, for ensuring that we have a typical English summer's day out there. Thank you very much, that's very kind of you. Actually, June's been awful in the UK, it's been absolutely dreadful. I'm going to talk to you for about the next 25 minutes. Um, I don't think there'll be question time, I don't want to dig into Russ's slot too much. So, if there's things you want to talk about later, I'm here obviously right through. I'm uh, here tomorrow as well, so just jot something down and come and grab me. I'd like to go, I've met a few of you, I'd like to get to meet as many as I can. Um, I've learnt a lot in the 18 months that I've been with IMS, an awful lot. Um, <laughs> words like tact and diplomacy are kind of quite useful actually. In fact, it takes you a long way. You can really get a long way with tact and diplomacy. I've also found that there are areas in the business which is so diverse. The Institute actually is a broad mix and you're a broad mix out there as well. But what's, what I'm driven by, the several things I'm driven by, um, I've learned that marine surveyors die in enclosed spaces. Surely in this day and age that's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. And I've been working, I've become quite passionate about this now and I've been working with a guy in the UK, um, Captain Michael Lloyd, who knows all about this subject and uh, we're working with him to bring something to uh, the publishing market, which you'll be able to access at uh, not a lot of money. So it's those type of things that we are working on behind the scenes. I want to reach out to all of you. You're not all IMS members here by any means. Some of you are, some of you aren't. But the important thing is, I'm driven by standards, I'm driven by quality in the industry. Those are key things that I've learned. And a lot of what Adam's already touched on that we do, it's about improving standards. That's what we are there to do. So let me press on. Um, who am I? Well, you know who I am, actually, but there you are. That's me. Now, it kind of looks a bit like me. Um, you can't see it, actually, but Nelson's flagship is behind me, so that's, that's my view out of my apartment. I'm very lucky. I look across the, uh, the water into the historic dockyard in Portsmouth. Um, I won't say too much about me, but a lot of people were quite surprised when this guy who knows nothing about the marine world and has even less about marine surveying got this job. Um, so I ought to tell you just very, very briefly, I was the maverick candidate at the interview. Um, the interview panel consisted of four people, and there were various marine surveyors, and there were me. 
And I walked through the door and said, well, what do you know about it all? And I said, well, nothing about me today. Um, so you uh, are not technical, but I can run a business. And uh, the IRS had got themselves into a bit of a pickle. And in the end, it became clear that there was a really good fit between myself and so on. But I've learned a lot, as I say, and I'm, I'm continuing to learn. So briefly, who are we and what do we do? Uh, Adam alluded to this, we're 25 years old next year. That's quite a landmark. We will be certainly uh, celebrating that. I don't know how yet, but we're just starting to pull some things together now. We're headquartered in Porchester, which you may never have heard of. It's between Southampton and Portsmouth. That's our HQ. Um, I always say thank you to my team. They push way beyond, uh, we punch well above our weight. They're an incredible bunch of people, there are nine of us, and um, they work tirelessly for members, they really do. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people never see, and I always take the opportunity to thank them for that. So we are the professional body for Marine Surveyors. We have a worldwide membership of something in the order of a thousand uh, people, and those are in 90 countries. So. Um, Looking forward to breaking through the 100 country barrier very soon. It's, it's quite an achievement in 25 years to have done that. We are the largest organisation of our kind. My belief is that we are there to educate, we're there to share knowledge and best practice. And I'll try and describe what that means and how you guys, 12,000 miles away from the UK, can get involved in that. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to show you what's available and then you can reach in and pull out what you want. That's my belief. There are six regional IMS branches, one of which is just forming at the moment. Australia is one of those. We have branches elsewhere around the world. So, when I arrived, I did nothing for the first three months. I just looked, I observed, I listened, I spoke to the staff, I spoke to marine surveyors. I went out on a couple of marine surveying jobs. Wonderful, we smashed a £2 million sun seeker on the first job I went out on. Into, uh, that was great. I said to the surveyor, what do you do? And he said, well, I'll just report what I saw. He said, it'll be an insurance job at the other end. That was a £2 million sun seeker destined for Genoa. Couldn't have been better. And I'm there taking photographs thinking this doesn't look right. And as it goes smacking into the bulkhead. But anyway, yeah, it's by the by. Um, so once I'd had a look at what was there, it was very, very clear to me early on. IMS needed to evolve. It got a bit stale. Uh, we needed to get some fresh impetus in there. I'm a very transparent type of guy. I don't mind telling you we were in a terrible financial state. In fact, Adam, if you'd run this conference last year, I couldn't have afforded to come. Uh, you know how bad things were. Um, we had two years of losses for lots of reasons I won't bore you with now, it's ancient history. But essentially what was happening is we were spending money we didn't have, and hey, you know where that leads. Uh, it's not a good place to be. So I set about embarking upon reducing the cost base within the business. Uh, and I talk about it as a business, it's an institute really, it's an organisation, but to me it's a business. You know, we're not really a profit-making organisation, we're there really not to make profit. But if you don't make profits and you make losses, that is going nowhere as, a, as an organisation. We managed to increase the revenue, so we reduced the cost, we increased the revenues. That's, as the accountant called it, a perfect storm. I looked at the accountants, we were paying London prices, we're a small business. <coughs> Get rid of the accountants. We saved ourselves, you couldn't, about 20,000 Aussie dollars by changing accountants. We moved our accounting software, that saved us another 8,000 Aussie dollars. And we were, had a rather ancient looking website, which wasn't very good, um, didn't score very highly on Google, and was costing us about 27,000 Aussie dollars a year. Um, you just move it all in-house. So we brought the whole thing in-house and got rid of those costs. We're on track, we made profit last year, and we started this year off very well. Up to the end of May, we're well ahead of the budget that we set. So we are moving into calmer waters. I see the Institute operating primarily in four core markets. We offer membership services. And for those of you who are not members, even for those of you who are members, you may be unaware of some of the things we do. I'll show you in a minute what we do. We're an educator. <coughs> we have an HNC, HND programme. More coming on that in a minute. And as Adam and his guys found out yesterday, um, we do a lot of certifying authority coding work in the UK. We're uh, licensed by the MCA uh, to provide coding work in the UK. Again, more on that shortly. And then I'm going to touch on the Marine Surveying Academy work that we do. Last year we grew membership by 10%. Fantastic. This year we're growing by, I think, more than that. So we're adding a lot of new members. There are some real hotspots around the world. We are adding quite a lot of new members in Europe. Uh, there's quite a lot coming through Nigeria. Um, China is popular. In fact, we signed off five new members in China last week, and India continues to grow. The Indian branch is very strong. 
Our technician membership category is set to grow strongly, primarily on the back of the accreditation work that we're providing. Uh, if you qualify through the various schemes that we're doing, you are entitled to join the IMS as a technician member. And if you've got a really good skill set, you'd probably join as a full member. Excited about this, I'm off to Vancouver in a couple of weeks' time. Um, AMSBC, Association of Marine Surveyors in British Columbia, after 35 years, has approached us with a view to merging their membership into the Institute, which is going to give us about 60 new members in Canada, uh, which is an exciting bit of news. Um, they've organised a date in uh, July. Uh, they've got about 120 people arriving in downtown Vancouver for a bit of a hoovy and a jolly. So uh, I'm going over to entertain them, which will be a fun night. So looking forward to that enormously. Let me just whiz through the membership benefits as I see them. This year we produced the photo identity card. That's been quite popular. Um, membership travel service scheme. We've just launched a scheme with a company called NORAD. Um, interesting company. I tested them out before I put any out for market. I tested it out. I was able to save about 600 Aussie dollars on my trip to Vancouver. So they're quite good. Um, so if you're looking to travel, it's worth turning them up. You have access to a YouTube channel. Many of you perhaps don't know that. There's a lot of content on there now. We're building it quite fast. You have access to our LinkedIn group. More on this to come. Access to Twitter, yes. I, I hate Twitter, actually. but I, I, I get Twitter, but I hate it. You know what I mean? It's horrible. But uh, this time last year, we had 60 or 70 followers. We've grown it in a year to over 500 followers. And it's becoming a really good uh, channel. I'm a great believer these days. I don't care how you get your information. Some people want it by email. Some people want it through LinkedIn. Some people want a phone call. Some people want it in the post. You've got to be active on all of those channels to get the information out there. Bet you didn't know we offer an inexpensive web building service. I was absolutely shocked. In the UK, 60% of members do not have a website. In this day and age, it's bonkers. Absolutely nuts. And I sat down and I said, why have you got a website? Oh, it's really expensive, Mike. Is it? Okay, uh, I, mean, I, 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 I don't want a website. To me, it's nuts. It's your calling card these days. You have to have a presence on the web. And uh, so I worked with a guy who helped me build the site, uh, the new site last year, and he turns out really inexpensive sites for me today. He'll you know, build a six page site for a few hundred dollars, and that's been really successful. We've done, I think, eight sites so far. Regular news items on the website. Um, I'll touch on the web later. Monthly news bulletin, I don't know. Um, it's a bit like this, it comes out as a colourful PDF. Yeah, you should all get this if you're members through um, various means. If you don't, let me know or let HHQ know. There's a lot of information in there. It's, um, it's a nice thing. Quarterly Report magazine. Um, I've only got one copy, but we do print them a few in hard copy. But most of you will have access to this now as through an e reader or as a downloadable PDF. Um, my background is publishing, so this for me was a, a real joy to get my hands on. Uh, we're now commissioning a lot of stuff in here. Before it was a case of somebody sent us in a press release and we published it. I'm now looking for articles that I think Winslow's will find of interest. And we're doing, we're moving some great um, fields with it. So watch this space because I'm really proud of this now. Conferences, seminars, events, and networking opportunities such as today. Briefly on member communications, I've touched actually on the newsletter and the, the PDF. Uh, there's an example. We published an events calendar earlier this year. Um, we do across the course of the year run about 20 events and again a lot of people say Mike I don't read email I just delete email when you send me an email you delete it okay I, it happens I get that so guess what we went back and published an old-fashioned printed calendar and sent it out to the surveyors um, it's actually boosted the attendance if you're into looking um, uh, for information on the website there's a tag cloud on the right hand side if you want I IMS news click on the IMS Tag, you can find all sorts of information about the uh, Institute there. And as I said, the report magazine is going by leaps and bounds. Now, publishing program. I'm really excited about this. Um, again, you can tell my background is coming out here as a publisher. Um, before Christmas of last year, I challenged some of the more senior members in the Institute um, to actually put some words down on a subject that was dear to their heart that they were passionate about. I thought I might get half a dozen manuscripts uh, from one of our, or two of our senior surveyors. We've actually been offered over 30 manuscripts. Quite extraordinary. Uh, we now have about nine of those in publication, and it does cover everything from as broad as it says it, acting as a, an expert witness, working in close spaces, the one I mentioned earlier, surveying woodcraft, 
uh, using computers in marine um, surveying, ultrasonic thickness measuring. Um, there's a whole raft of stuff to come. So very, very excited about this. Typically, they're going to be A5 in size, um, so you can roll them up, put them in your back pocket. 64 to 80 pages. It's not everything you could possibly want to know about a subject, but you know we are publishing in about 18 to 20,000 words on each subject. Now, they're self-published. Ten years ago, you wouldn't have done that. <coughs> You've gone out to a publisher who would then you know, publish your books and got them out through the news trade or however you wanted to distribute it. Uh, Craig, who's the designer in the office, is excellent. So he's working with those manuscripts, he's putting them together, and we'll self-publish them. What does that mean? It means they're available as a downloadable PDF through the website. They're going to be coming out via Kindle, for those of you who do Kindle, and you'll be able to buy copies, so there will be some hard copies as well. So we're trying to cover a whole basis here. Now, most importantly, okay, that's a UK price, but 35 to $50, something like that, Aussie. Um, I'm a great believer that, uh, I've gone one step too far there, great believer we want to make this information available for the majority, not the minority. The, the, the manuscripts I've seen so far are absolutely first class. I think even if you are something of an expert in a subject, it's still, maybe you want to, uh, you want to pick up some, uh, some fresher skills, something like that. So I'm quite excited about this. We will have the first books available, I think, probably in the next six weeks. Um, I've seen a lot of books on marine surveying that are coming out at two, three hundred Aussie dollars. Yeah, it's, it's too expensive. Um, we have a lot of members in places like Bangladesh, and to them, yeah, it's a lot of money. So I'm trying to appeal to, to the majority. So watch this space. I think you'll be quite excited by what's coming. A little plug for the main London conference. Um, I've managed to secure the old library at Lloyd's. I don't know if you've been there. It's still, well, there's a picture coming. It's now a stunning, stunning room. 1929 that was built, and they built the whole of the Lloyd's building now around it. It's a staggering venue. Uh, really delighted to be going there. We have confirmed the speaker program. Uh, if there's one speaker I would highlight, his name is Captain Nick Sloan, who has agreed to speak for an hour. He was the guy who ran the Par Buckling project on the Costa Concordia. Um, and I think he's worth the gate money alone. I think he's a really interesting man. Uh, I've had a couple of conversations with him now. I think he's going to be really worth listening to. As with this, we're videoing it all. So guess what? You'll be, be able to get those videos off the website. And we'll tell you where all when they're published and you can go and access them. Also, keeping faith with tradition, we're going on board HMS Belfast, which I'm sure most of you know, fabulous old um, warship, which is moored up by Tower Bridge. And we have our AGM on the 8th of September at 2 o'clock, which we're holding in Waterman's Hall. Well, let me talk to you briefly about education. Uh, before my time, IMS had a diploma. Uh, the diploma was felt to be rather too easy. And a lot of people were coming through saying, well, I've got a diploma, I'm a qualified surveyor now because I've got the diploma. And they went awfully good. Quality wasn't very good. So the board made a decision and said, we need to make this harder. So we launched an HNC, HND programme. This is equivalent to first year university. It's level four, level five. That means anything to, you know, you guys are involved with it. So we've really uprated this. Currently 100 students in the program. It's all distance learning. Uh, I think we've got two in the UK, the rest are all overseas. We've got a, uh, two guys in the office who run the program. We have put, I think, about 10 now have actually qualified since we launched through the HNC. You may know Pearson at Excel, you may not. They are a well-known UK awarding body. This is the only, currently, the only course of its kind to enjoy this status in the world. There are over 30 units to study, doesn't matter if you're into small craft, or large ships, or rigs, or heli decks, or whatever you guys do, there'll be a unit for you. We also sell these units individually, because it was apparent to me, a busy marine surveyor who wants to take on an HNC, we'd expect you to do 600 hours of study time to get your HNC. That's a lot of, lot of work, and for a lot of guys it's just too much, it's just too much time. So, for those who actually just want to pick up a particular unit, and they are incredible, these units, they really are the business. Um, 775 Aussie dollars equivalent, you can download it, those through the website. Now, Certifying Authority, really excited about them yesterday when we got into some nitty gritty here. We just briefly run through for those of you who don't know, we are one of 12 in the UK bodies who are um, contracted by the UK government through the NCA to provide vessel coding services. In the UK, anything that's 24 metres and under, that's used commercially, must be coded by law. Our current fleet size, about 400 vessels. Here we are doing some certifying authority heel test training a couple of weeks ago. 
Uh, we have about 50 of our regular members, and they're not all UK actually, we've got members uh, who are doing coding work in Gibraltar, um, Italy, South of France, um, Holland, all over the place. So we have 50. They are, I would say, some of the, the cream of our surveyors. Um, examiners are approved as to what vessel types they can do. And I should know, I think it's 15 vessel types you can do. So there's FRP, GRP, there's wood, there's steel, there's aluminium, and so it goes on. Um, so you have to apply. The committee will then interview you. And then if you're fit for purpose, then we will tell you which vessel types we're happy for you to, to do. There's an inclining experiment going on there. Um, we operate in accordance with ISO 9001, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. There is, as we discovered yesterday, an extensive procedures manual. And the procedures manual is how we say to the MCA we carry out the contract that they've given us. And they audit us. It is the most swinging audit. Uh, I won't bore you with the details. There was a, a nasty incident. We were the coding authority for a vessel that had a man overboard who sadly drowned. And uh, they came into our organisations before my time uh, like an absolute dose of salt. They went through the whole building. The files were turned upside down. And I'm not quite sure what they were looking for because actually it was the skipper of the vessel who had gone beyond what we coded him to do. But what they turned up, they didn't like. They didn't like the way that our procedures were being operated. And uh, it caused a right hoo-ha. Um, the upshot was we spent 18 months putting our house in order. The MCA came out to do the audit in November, and the guy private, privately said to me, he said, you are now the best uh, CA in the UK currently, so I'm very happy with that. We do these uh, training days. We have to, as part of the contract, run twice yearly training days with our certifying authority examiners. If, you, if you're a CA examiner and you don't come, then we'll suspend you. And it, it's, there's no black and white answer there. You've got to have training. Um, so it's really important. Social media and the web, um, yeah, I, I do get this stuff and I, I do quite enjoy it actually. Apart from Twitter, I hate Twitter, but we do it. Sorry Adam, we keep going on about it, but... <coughs> we do have an IMS LinkedIn profile. I know LinkedIn isn't for everybody, but there's a couple hundred people there linking to us. Now, the discussion group is interesting. Uh, there's 220 following us currently. Uh, I think it's, well you find just going to LinkedIn and put in IMS. You can join the group, it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to be a member to join, it's quite a lot of members, non-members who are, are there. But it is a really valuable resource. Um, quick example, there was a young marine surveyor in the UK um, who just posted something on there a couple of weeks ago. He said, I'm just starting in the industry, so I need some reading material. Within a day, the guy had a flipping library full of stuff, and it was all free. People were sending, posting links to go and get this, that and the other. So there's a lot of marine surveyors talking to marine surveyors about issues. Um, I try not to drive that group. I'll put stuff up, but it's marine surveyors who are, are, are driving the group. So if you're into LinkedIn, go and have a look. If you're into Twitter, we have got 500 followers, at IMS Marine Finders. YouTube, we've, um, before we've done this conference, we videoed the Indian conference last year, we videoed the London conference last year. There are 30 conference videos there. If you've not had a look at them, do. Uh, there's some really interesting content there that's worth having a look at. We also have over 50 other videos on the IMS website. There's things, and I know a lot of you guys are quite, you know, you're small businesses, some of you are sole traders, operating on your own. Uh, business information I know is a challenge for some guys, so I'm trying to sort of provide some, some business content as well, as well as some more sort of you know, hard hitting uh, wing surveying videos. Briefly on the website, we launched this in October. Um, Month one, we attracted 5,000 unique visitors. For six months, seven months, somewhere up to 12,000 unique visitors a month. It's growing fast. 61,000 unique visitors over that time, 141,000 page views. Really strong news content, actually. Um, there are now 300 news stories and features up there. So we're committed to putting content up there. Uh, again, you know, I know a lot of you say, well, it's just a website and so on, but if you want content <coughs> relevant to your industry, go and have a look. There's quite a lot there, you'd be surprised. This really surprised me. Most websites, 30 seconds on a site, think about it when you go onto a site. You know, if it's no good, you just move on, don't you? People spend over three minutes on the IMS website. That's an extremely high time. I've touched on the videos. We took the opportunity to have the enhanced surveyor search, um, which again, if you're not familiar with it, it's now much more user-friendly than the old site was. And if you've got any comments to make on that, do let me know. There's also a range of events on there, right around the world, all sorts of shows and exhibitions and conferences. Feature articles to read, and a really good collection of resources. There's all sorts of material there. Go to the resources page and have a look. You'll be surprised at what you find there. 
We'll talk very briefly, another five minutes maybe, Adam, and I'll uh, sit down. Um, Marine Surveying Academy. Principal aims of this, um, it's a wholly owned subsidiary of the IMS, and we launched this last year. So it was a start-up business. It's the source of learning and education. We are providing accreditation services and examinations for other marine and maritime organisations, and I'll touch on who they are in a minute. We do provide industry special courses, and that's something I want to roll out. Adam, perhaps we should have a conversation uh, about what we can perhaps do out in this neck of the woods as well. There's a lot of content out there now that we're building that we could deliver out here. Why does all this matter? Simply, to me it matters, and I think to the board it matters, because the revenue we make from the MSA underpins the work we can then do in the IMS. The IMS is essentially a not-for-profit organisation. The profit we make here, we can then start to do all sorts of other activities that we simply couldn't afford to do, to do before. So, briefly, our current portfolio that introduces some wonderful acronyms. ERMI, International Registered Marine Installation Inspectors, that's really niche. RMCI, Adam, I think, made um, reference to that earlier. Registered Marine Coatings Inspectors, of course, a bit on that in a minute. And the CMID Accreditation Scheme, which is brand new. IMCA, if you know IMCA, the International Marine Contractors Association. Um, we're working with them on a really exciting project. Let me just briefly take you through what happened last year, because it was not... <laughs> Let me start up business. You know, you can have a plan, but guess what? Ooh, the plan went down the toilet. Uh, John Lawrence, some of you will know. John Lawrence was my predecessor. I engaged John on a one-year contract um, to help me develop that and drive it. He had some contacts that was good to keep. So John did a year, and now he's actually retired. He um, finally went in December. So uh, that was the end of his life with IMS. We delivered the ERMI examinations. We did five of those last year. Uh, did one in Australia, actually, one in Perth, uh, one in Norway, some in the States, and a couple in the UK. We piloted the RMCI course. Now, this was really interesting. We had the RMCI, primarily the Registered Marine Coaches Inspectors course, is primarily super yachts. And uh, we put this course together and we invited 10 of the probably best known super yacht coatings guys in Europe to come and take the course on a pilot basis, and then to give us feedback. And oh boy, did we get some feedback. And on the back of that, we fundamentally changed a lot of what we did to make it fit for purpose. It is fit for purpose now. And then December last year, we delivered our, our first course, which was Amsterdam. We put 12 people through. They didn't all pass, actually. 10 of the 12 passed. Two have come back and now passed on a reset. Peter Morgan, some of you might know, past president of the INS. Peter was taken very seriously ill. The reason I put that in there is that Peter was the course tutor for the RMCI. Now that presented um, all sorts of challenges. And Peter, bless him, um, he had a major heart attack, was rushed in. Silly bugger that he is, he rang me the day after from his hospital bed. He said, I'm in hospital, Mike. And I said, why are you ringing me? You know, for God's sake, get yourself up. Well, we go, don't worry, Peter, we'll get it sorted. We found a couple of other guys to run the course, we got the course away. Peter, for what it's worth, is now fighting fit again. Uh, he is going to stand down, he's still on the management board of IMS, he was going to stand down at the AGM this year and uh, finally retire at the end of this year. Hilary Axel, you won't know, but Hilary has now been appointed as the business manager to run the Marine Academy. She's excellent. She has a, an interesting background with people like Kenwood, you might know, who make the, um, the kitchen equipment. She was a business development director for them, so she's a really good operator. And we took much of last year, I'll talk about Seaman briefly in a minute, but it took... 15 months to bring this whole CMID accreditation program from a standing start to where we are now. So that was a, a lot of last year taken up with that. And I believe we have built a sound business uh, that is built on a solid base, which is really important going forward. But if you're on ERMI, all of these things have their own websites if you're interested. Uh, ERMI.co.uk, we'll find you that one. And this is all about corrosion in subsea pipes. As I said, it's quite niche. Um, the programme itself is driven by Wood Group Kenny, who you might know. They actually run the course. Um, we effectively provide the examinations and do the accreditation. Currently, I think there are 90, 93, I think, qualified inspectors. Um, so we run the scheme, they get a card, it's a five year thing, there's a CPD programme around it, um, and we'll call them back after five years to get them reaccredited and, and to go through the qualification again. Briefly on RMCI. Uh, there's the RMCI website, uh, rmciinspectors.com. Um, 
a challenging bunch of stakeholders here, actually. We're currently, in fact, 43 have just completed Jenna. I think we're up to 52 now who are registered and have qualified. Uh, again, there's a whole range of CPD goes on the back of this. Um, just worth actually pointing out why this, this was developed. I don't know if you guys know, are these super yachts are ships these days? They're not yachts at all, they're flipping great big ships. And I was astonished. Somebody said that as much as 50%, or as many as 50% of those coming out of the sheds were subject to litigation because of the coatings. And it was simply driven by the likes of Mr. Roman Abramovich, whom we all love, and he's a wonderful man, who said, that paint job doesn't look good to me. You know, I thought it was going to look like a Rolls Royce, and it doesn't. I can see a mark. And it was, it's that stupid. And then he would say, well, get it sorted. You know? Or I'm going to sue you for 50 million or 100 million. Or, it didn't matter to those guys because it's competitive money, isn't it? It's not real money. And that was what the industry said. Do you know what? We've had enough of this. We need to upskill these guys. We need to give them the experience and the knowledge so that when a surveyor or an inspector goes into a shipyard and looks at that hull and they say, it's not good enough, sort it. Because if that goes out, then you know these guys who are in these boats and ships. I mean, they are wealthy men and ladies. They'll simply turn around and say, I'm not happy with it. And what's happening is going to take, I think, two years. But I think within two years, if you are not a qualified RMCI, you will not be working in the super yacht yard looking at coatings. I think it's as simple as that. The industry is driving the agenda, which is quite exciting. We've got three more courses this year, Hamburg, Southampton, Amsterdam. We might do one in Australia, straight New Zealand. Uh, we're certainly going to go to America with it. Uh, we'll do more European venues. We've got to go to Palmer next year. Uh, possibly the south of France, um, possibly Korea, if there's a, a demand for it. They are the most challenging group of stakeholders. I love them and I absolutely loathe them. You know Iconia, perhaps, you know Cybas, the Super Yacht Builders Association. They are powerful people and they are have big egos. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Uh, very difficult group of people to work with, but financially quite lucrative for us. We touch on the IMCA seamen accreditation scheme. I sat in a meeting back in February last year in London with these guys and they said, we have a problem. And I said, what's the problem? And they said, the problem is, Mike, you, me, can go onto our website, you can download a CMID uh, form, Common Reading Inspection Document, for what it stands for if you don't know. You can download one of those, you can go on board an offshore vessel, you can tick the boxes and charge the guy £1,500, dollars and we can't stop you doing it because we don't know who you are. Now that struck me as being completely bonkers. And what they said is the industry had come to them and said, right, enough, enough's enough. We want to know who's coming on board our vessels. So uh, guys were going on and then the skipper's saying, or the master's saying, well, who are you? Well, I'm Mike Schwartz. Yeah, but who are you? Are you, are you competent to come on my vessel? They didn't know. So that was the background to it. Now when you try and develop a world-class accreditation scheme from scratch, it's not easy, actually. It really taxed us. And the hardest thing was producing the form that you want people to fill in. Adam, you went through this as well. We, we exchanged notes earlier in the year with the, uh, the AMSA accreditation scheme. Uh, it's a little bit different, but you know, what questions do you ask? How do you get someone to prove they're competent? So there are seven vessel types for this. Uh, Jack up, uh, LNG fueled, um, general work boat. I forget the others, but there are seven. So you can apply for accreditation in one, two, three, or all seven. Um, we've then put together, using IMS members, um, they are the assessors who look at this. So we've had to assess the assessors because it all becomes auditable further down the line. We opened the scheme on the 1st of May. We put the first two people through on the 1st of June. I think we've now got four accredited. And I think we've had 72 applications so far. Now all of this gets exciting when I show you the next line. There are 3,000, we believe, senior inspectors around the world. They're not all going to come forward for accreditation, it's, they won't. And to be fair, you don't have to be accredited to do a CMED. But I think again, the industry will drive this agenda. And sooner or later, the industry is going to turn around and say, if you're not accredited, you're not coming on my ship. I want to see your membership card, I want to be able to find you on the website, or I don't know who you are. So it's about where I started off this presentation, increasing the quality, increasing the standard, making sure that people um, know what they're doing, making sure that people are competent and putting in some kind of, it's not regulation per se, but putting in some kind of checks and balances. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>